What's good, everybody? It's Kev, and welcome to another beautiful episode of Andromeda. Today, we have a very, very special panel. We have the Kirill Cards artist and co-founder in the building. So let's make some noise. Um, the first thing, <laughs> thank you, Crypto Lurker. Um, the first thing I want to start off with is everybody doing a slight introduction, and then we'll go from there. I'm Daniel. Um, I'm a researcher in California, and I've done pen drawings for a long time. I'll pass to uh, Robeck. Hey guys, I'm Robeck. I'm having some technical difficulties, but just disregard. Uh, I'm Robeck. Uh, I live on the internet. I don't have a, a lot to introduce. I'm Luis, uh, crypto pop on the internet. Uh, I've been doing Bitcoin and uh, crypto propaganda art for about four years now. And that's kind of how I met these guys. Uh, I live in the Philippines, so it's daytime where I am right now. And this is, this is a coffee. So yeah, looking forward <laughs> to hanging out with all of you. Me too. I, this is a coffee as well. Hey guys, I'm Max and I'm a social engagement artist up in uh, Northern California. I also do stuff with uh, cryptocurrency related projects, especially in uh, gaming and focusing on DAOs. Um, thanks for hosting, Kev. Thank you. Hey everyone, I'm Travis. I'm one of the co-founders of Curio Cards. This is the artist panel. I'm here for moral support and uh, to talk about the old stories. <laughs> Hi, my name is Crypto Loka. Um, I'm not part of the Curio Cards team, but I'm just a fanatic. Love it. All right. So we're going to start off with Travis. Travis, so can you tell us how you were introduced to these amazing artists? What's the story behind that? So actually, this is an interesting uh, combination of the seven artists because um, I think Robeck is the only one that I had like a direct uh, introduction to. Uh, Robeck showed up um, in our Discord after we launched the project and we we're making cards. Uh, Robeck and his friend Moon showed up and they're like, we like the cards. They were our first fans. They were like the first people who, who thought what we were doing was cool after we'd spent a lot of time explaining it to people and getting a lot of blank stares. This was NFTs in 2017. That term kind of existed, but it wasn't really used. So it was just a lot of like, why is this, why is this, uh... oh yeah, that's right. It was Telegram first. Yeah. There's a lot of, uh, you know, why, why do I want to buy a JPEG thing kind of questions. But yeah, Robeck showed up. He was our first fan and then he became an artist. Uh, the rest of the artists, uh, so like Daniel, uh, you uh, actually, no, yeah, similar to Robeck, you just showed up, uh, but you showed up on the Google form, right? Yeah, we had a Google form out just saying, hey, who wants to who wants to do this thing? And I actually would, would love to hear after this from you, like how you found that form in the first place, because we tried to share it, but it was not a popular project. Uh, Luis ran into uh, one of the advisors on the project, Rick at uh, El Rio, which was a meetup group. I was doing the San Francisco Bitcoin meetup group at the time. And every, is like the second Thursday of every month, we'd go to a bar and we'd do proof of drink. And we had some sponsors, we had free drinks, and we sit around and talk about uh, Bitcoin. And uh, Luis ran into someone there who introduced us. And uh, Max, I actually didn't even know who Max was until more recently. Uh, he um, is a friend of Tom's, uh, Matt Bitcoins, who's the other co-founder on the project. Beautiful. So. Do you, do you want to share your story about how you found the Google form? I need to look back through my email. I wish there was a better way to trace our history, our wanderings on the internet, but I love filling out forms and it was right at the intersection that was fascinating to me between art and technology and participation, just allowing people to submit art. So never met an art competition that was free that I didn't turn down. <laughs> I so love you that. saw it as like an art con. You saw it as like an art contest. I just saw it as a uh, way to just, just like slipping a little business card at the coffee shop or something. Just drop in the art. Maybe someone resonates with it. Maybe not. Usually not. Well, I'll tell you the reason why we liked yours was how different it was from everything else we had seen. We wanted to show that NFTs can be different mediums, different. You know, it, it, we wanted to have like as wide and also there was it wasn't crypto themed we wanted to show like a wide sampling of possibilities and you fit right into that yeah yeah man and can you tell us a little bit what inspires your drawings very interesting very intricate very thoughtful it's uh it's that duality between thoughtful and thoughtless mm -hmm. like picking the right simple rules and then just following them through and it ends up being relaxing while it's happening kind of interesting after the fact. And I usually just like pick my next move or my strategy and then go from there and used to have more time to do detailed drawings than I do now. <laughs> okay. So something you, you, you quoted that, uh, 
One of your favorite quotes by Goethe is science arose from poetry. And when times change, the two can meet again on a higher level as friends. Uh, can you describe what that means in your perspective? I'll give a first take and then definitely would love to hear what another artist thinks. Okay. It just gives me the image of like a DNA double helix and all these threads through the past of history and uh, art and technology. And it's been separate the way that art has played out and the way technology has played out, but now we're seeing them recombine. And so I thought it was an appropriate quote because it reflected how there was new combinations of like the technology and the science and then the poetry and the art. Love that. As you can see, Daniel is easily the classiest artist on the panel. <laughs> <laughs> Like I my I, I don't know about like Max's and Robeck's kind of um, 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 motivations, but like for me back then it was as simple as just like making people laugh and hopefully getting them to buy Bitcoin. Those were my main motivations for my work. I mean, granted, like it's become a hell of a lot more than that. And kind of watching this thing grow over time has been like a thrilling experience. Like, you know, kind of Daniel saying that um, he he thinks about, you know, he thought about kind of uh, submitting his artwork as as like joining an art contest. Like, dude, I think you fucking won that one. <laughs> <laughs> like, I you did pretty well on that one that one little art submission. I think so. Uh, yeah. Um, it's it's kind of a crazy point in time where we all find ourselves because, you know, it's a very ragtag group of, of folks that kind of have found themselves together here, um, united under a very, you know, kind of a cause that we didn't really quite completely understand back then. So it's a it's a very interesting um, point that we found ourselves in. So that's that's it. Again. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm clearly not the, the most elegant speaker here because like Daniel's got his shit together. Um, nah, but nah, if I throw it to roll back, we're okay too. I, <laughs> like, I wouldn't, I wouldn't sell yourself short, Luis. You were literally teaching me about, you're literally, you're teaching me Shakespeare last night. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, yeah. <laughs> Luis, I am very curious to know, and what was your mindset in 2017 when you made those, the dog meme cards? Because right. it's crazy yeah. and here comes 2021 and Doge and Chiba are going through the moon. So did right, you have yeah. an idea that that would happen with Doge or what was that going on? What was going yeah. through your mind in 2017? Well, I mean, I wish I could, I wish I could give you like a better explanation for it, but like really what it was, was I didn't like drawing bulls. Um, so I draw bulldogs instead. I mean, mm. that's basically it, right? I mean, the whole bulls. bulls versus bears thing. I was like, I just don't like drawing bulls. They're not cute. Like I could not find a way to cartoon them in a way that I thought was cute enough. So I just went with Bitcoin bull dogs. Um, and that became kind of the, the theme of a lot of the, my, my earlier cartoons. And um, I wanted to do this thing where none of the, the animals were the, those iconic uh, Bitcoin stuff, right? Which is the bulls and the bears. So I did uh, bull dogs and then koala bears, which are not really bears. So, so those, that's, that's it. That's all it was. And like, and I was trying to be funny. I was trying to make my friends laugh. And really it was just for, um, I had so many of these doodles um, that I kind of like was churning out um, nearly every day. Right. Because I was doing it mostly to get my friends on Facebook to look at Bitcoin, but to do it kind of soft. Like, you know, mm. just like have them keep seeing these iconographies and things like that, but not hard sell it. And that was kind of the intention behind all of those things. And, you know, kind of when I met Rick, who was one of the advisors of Curio Cards, I already had like dozens of these things. And I was like, well, I mean, I guess I'm just choose some of these. And, you know, I had a whole bunch of dog ones and the dog ones were always pretty popular. So I thought, ah, yeah, let's go with the dogs. Um, and that's why that's how I ended up being the crypto dogs artist for this collection, which is again the kind of wonderful randomness at work. Yeah, love it, love it. There's a fourth dog too. Yes, yeah, there oh, yeah, was that, that one. Yeah, yeah, that the it didn't make the cut, but it was like a it was a, a a bulldog and then a koala bear, and the koala bear was trying to teach the bulldog how to trade Bitcoin. Um, but that was uh, that was a cartoon about how the price had been dropping, and like it was like uh, you know how they they'll say things like oh it's a it's a bull trap, 
uh, that's like trading trading jargon. So that was kind of like my take on how you know kind of the market was crashing at the time and the bears are teaching the bulls a lesson. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, that was it. That one didn't make a cut because it was not very optimistic. Travis, what was your mindset when you seen bonds get submitted for basically like the dog theme? Because it, well, it was completely different than anything else that was that mm -hmm. was out. Yeah, I really liked the um, so there had been a lot of like uh, Photoshop kind of work before. Um, so I liked the kind of hand drawn nature of it and the consistent story, not the consistent story, but that that theme being across all of them very similar because uh, the three. So there's the story set cards, which obviously have a, a common theme. And then it's the idea of then each artist having a theme, but you had a crypto graffiti and his theme was these uh, bank logos reimagined, right? And then after that was uh, Philippe with his uh, other corporate brands reimagined. And it was really cool to see a departure and again, hand-drawn nature. I really liked them a lot, yeah. Yeah, very interesting. So I, I want to move And I like the to... colors too. I love how like vibrant the colors are. Yeah, good work, good work, uh, Luis. Um, I want to move over to Robeck World and because that you completely changed the game as well with, you know, actually making human an animations. So what what inspired that? Uh, well, I mean, so, yeah, I was going to say I don't want to repeat everything I've ever said, but you have a brand new audience, so I'm going to repeat everything I've ever said. So at the time, um, <laughs> to, to what Travis so what Travis was saying is that my friend actually, his name is Moon, um, he was the first official Curio fan. And he, uh, we were working on this decentralized social network stuff. And he was like, hey, man, uh, you like collectibles. There's this project that's like trading cards, but it's on Ethereum. And I had done these colored coins on Bitcoin. Uh, not me. This is me talking as Moon, of course. And he was like, but this seems like it's way easier and it's super cool. And I think you'd be into it. And so I was like, oh, this immediately clicks. Uh, I, I totally understand this, like from from like a perspective. And at the time, we weren't calling these NFTs because there just wasn't a term for it, even though shortly towards the end of 2017, I think NFTs started to like be theory crafted. Um, and so I got involved and I, I just I, I was super into it. And so me and Moon at the same time, we're like, okay, well, you know, if these collectible trading card things are going to be uh, a thing in Ethereum space, we want to do our own like riffs on this. And at the time, ICOs are like the big deal. And so people had a bunch of these ICO tokens that were kind of like useless and they didn't have any properties. There was no point because it, people were never going to build those utilities out. And so Moon and I, at the same time that they were doing Curio, we were like, we're going to make a Curio gallery just so it's really cool. Uh, but we're also gonna envision visualizations of all these ICO tokens because they are also ERC20 tokens and we could, we made art for them. And I, if I can find them one day, I'll share them. They're pretty funny. Uh, but the idea was like, we're gonna build these, this gallery, build a social media platform where people could like look in ch each other's like galleries as like trading card binders and then be like, okay, well, if we want to add utility to these ICOs, we can add slotting to them, which was a, protocol we were working on where it was like uh, I want to add stats to uh, like stats to these different tokens and we see that now we have like a lot of metadata and like how nfts are released now but at the time we were just like trying to add utility on top of this other stuff um, and so we slotting eventually other people figured it out way better wrapping is now more like slotting uh, like what we wanted to do then but like yeah so we were we were working on an rpg uh, that was like a mud which is a multi-user dungeon and it's like a text-based RPG thing. And so in the game, we wanted to drop these digital assets that would have been NFTs. And so when I was doing the art, I had just started doing pixel art. And I shared with the guys all these like super complicated, like 120 frame animations. It was like, I'm gonna do these uh, like pixel art fantasy things because that's what I wanna do. And they're like, you can't because we don't have the techni te technical capability to do 120 frames of animation. Uh, and so instead I kind of, paired that back from my original vision of like elves and other stuff and was like, okay, well, let's make it Curio meta. And so I drew the founders as these different RPG characters. Um, wow. And so, yeah, Travis is the bard and Mad Bitcoins is uh, the wizard. And then the barbarian, I was allowed to do an animation, but it could only be two frames. And that was uh, Rhett. So um, I want to yeah. go to Max uh, and ask him a couple questions about his, his artwork because we haven't yet. Max, your, your artwork to me is the most mysterious a part in the collection and it's it's very unique and, and cool to me as well so i want to know what inspired like what 
what does your art mean to you? What inspired it and why the different colors? Oh man, where do I begin? Um, all right, so what you see in those pieces, <clears throat> they're physical works. So actual physical artworks that are represented. It's not a digital element. Um, there's like little, little pieces of styrofoam that are from that series. And that represents a community engagement project. So there's all these different types of art. There's like painting, sculpture, drawing, printmaking, um, and other types of mediums like performance. Um, I got super inspired by a genre of art called um, social practice or social engagement in art, which basically means that um, you bring these um, artistic skills and practices into a community. And um, it's, it's just another category of art, essentially, that is, I would say overall, like more equitable relationship between the artist and the viewer. So those pieces were made with my community. And at this time, in uh, my artistic career, I was trying to just get people to do anything creative and anything inspiring. So that's what those, those pieces are, literally getting people together. Um, I came up with this algorithmic process of, um, of these different phases, and I essentially kind of like crowdsourced these, but as a group of people. And so rather than being kind of like this mysterious artist behind the, behind the scenes on this pedestal, I, I, um, it kind of appears that way, but when you dig into it, it's actually like this more equitable form of art that was, you know, my community making these pieces um, as a group, as an entity. And so it's kind of, I would say it's like a decentralized body of work. It's not necessarily like, like I couldn't have just done that fully by myself. I was more of like the stage director or like instigator for it. Um, and so, yeah, I had a bunch of people at like a coffee shop, like coloring in these uh, printouts that I did. And that's essentially it. There's like this kind of idea of, um, so my idea for the long-term vision of some project like this is basically automate it and, you know, make it accessible to more people to be part of that process. So, you know, I literally have written out how to make pieces just like this. And one day I'll release that and, you know, maybe I'll get a programmer to help me uh, program it so people can crank them out themselves at home. That's crazy. I love that. Oh, were these people just random people who went into the coffee shop? Yeah, yeah. A lot of the times they were. Um, I started out with some like some really close friends and really close uh, family members um, coloring those in. And then people say, hey, what are you guys doing coloring in all these like bright colored sheets of paper? And, um, and you know, sometimes, you know, if they had enough time, I could explain to them, you know, what what form of art we were making collectively. Um, but yeah, I mean, people were very curious to see that. And then I would show them and actually people in the community didn't know that, um, you know, that it was me doing them they were like Marisol Vegas and there's a whole an another like there's some really funny things that come out of that I've had <laughs> a bunch of random dudes message me and be like I was inspired by your art and like um yeah just just really funny got some really you were a girl right yeah yeah I got some like super <laughs> creepy like majorly creepy messages and so I've um since then empathized a lot more with uh female artists and the tons of nonsense that they deal with and um, but yeah, I, I did it under an alias. It was kind of conflicting with a lot of other traditional printmaking that I was studying in school, because in traditional printmaking, you're dealing with like cotton paper that's preserved for a long time. And it's all about the authenticity and limited edition. And so I literally did exactly the opposite <laughs> and produced these, these originals on foam core with like laser print printouts with like acetate, which is like a low grade material and like um, even the metal tape that I wrapped originals with were like, like actual foil duct tape. Um, and yeah, so I, I did under alias, I didn't want to conflict with a lot of consulting stuff I did too. That was another, another major, uh, issue I'd had with, uh, trying to get consulting gigs and, um, with computer jobs or like, you're kind of all over the place, aren't you? So then, so then I, I started to move to a lot of aliases. So Marisol was, um, yeah, I never thought that would be the one that got famous, but there's a bunch of other ones out there. I'm sure uh, some of you will will discover at some point. <laughs> I bet 90% or 99% of people didn't know that was the backstory of card 27 to 29. Yeah, it's crazy. It's uh, representing uh, social practice and social engagement artwork. So pretty, uh, pretty awesome. I, I wonder about the person who showed up at the cafe and happened to color in part of the cards 
that are now, you know, so, so popular and so well known and going to Christie's, I just, I wonder at their perspective, if they ever found out. They're going to come to, to Marisol and say, um, yes, I'd like my royalties, please. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh yeah. There's going to be a bunch of those. I'm sure. <laughs> hey, Daniel, I see you have your uh, hand up. You go ahead. I, I think it's so interesting the way Max shares it and the way everyone's work is sort of always embedded in the context that it came from. And just the point about how the feedback with others changes the art. I think that's one of the coolest things that we'll all be experimenting with and co-creating is like what happens when artists are supported by a community that wants to ask them questions or make requests or respects their um, adventures in different art forms. Like those are new kinds of feedback loops between artists and other people who are not artists, or at least at that time, don't consider themselves that way. So it will be just really cool to see how all these different NFTs kind of are in feedback with the art, just like people who play music are in feedback with like the way that music is played. Mm. Yeah, you interacting I... with your fans, Daniel, uh, in, in the Discord. People will like ask you to make things for them and or you'll just make things for them. Yeah, one of the one of the problems I had with just uh, traditional style artworks was that that feedback loop, just not being as uh, immediate. Like it would take a while to get. You'd have an art show, and then you might be able to sit in the corner and see how people respond to stuff. Um, and I'm like, that's not as gratifying. So the social practice and social engagement art, it's like, oh man, this can just be a fun experience for, you know, the like in a co-creative type of way. And I feel like we're starting to get back to that with NFTs. And you kind of see this, um, um, yeah, feedback loop based on, you know, if people like these profile pictures and then you see people improve on styles, it's, it's kind of like this hive mentality of, of co-creation. Um, you see it a lot on SoundCloud. They'll just like make these like slam and beat songs with like really crappy samples, but then they just get better and better based on, um, you know, it's kind of like this recursive model of like, and it's, it's almost, it's hard to even differentiate between, you uh, like who's the um, who's the creator? You know who's the original artist to the song? And um, yeah, it's just really incredible to see where the direction of art is going. Yeah. Are any of you guys open to that? Um, like future projects where, if like all the curious artists get together and start like this community art project where everybody comes in and like does like a, like for example like a big community art wall or something or like a comic. That sounds like both the most chaotic thing ever and the most fun thing ever. So yeah, sure. I like, why not? That sounds awesome. I'm not sure that we're um, all compatible in art styles, by the way. So that, looks, that, 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 could, be, that could be pretty crazy. <laughs> like chaotic curio card community. You're like no, a hand off from I one art it. style to the next. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, I, there I be love it. Page. Let's do it. I'm totally down. Like uh, we all like draw on one uh one jpeg and just do a mashup like a uh like a yeah. like a frankenstein, <laughs> to a frankenstein yeah like character. try and complete like a, a picture like you're given a topic and then everybody has to draw like one part of the thing but it ends up being like a <laughs> like a mutant version of do, that thing do you guys know about that surrealist game where they used to like take a sheet of paper and fold it over someone draws a head and then they just draw where the, the exquisite next oh, yeah, are. Yeah. oh exquisite, corpse. exquisite corpse yes yes uh, that, oh man okay <laughs> we're gonna do that for sure for sure <laughs> cool yeah i'm down exquisite sure why not that corpse. sounds awesome <laughs> curio cor curio exquisite curio corpse, corpse definitely curio corpse i have a question for daniel you have the most rare card in the collection Had like has that have you processed that like what does that mean to you knowing that you have the most rare it isn't even that i have the most rare well I you moved, created I'm, the most rare. i moved yeah. the pen for it yeah that's I true apologize. yeah um i i don't know um, as I've also kind of shared elsewhere, being somebody who made manual art, like just drawing on paper, the idea of even two was like, this is already moving into the reproduction genre. And so um, I guess it just shows how different people, like from different perspectives, are going to have different estimates of what would be a ton of pieces to make. And I just thought, you know, if I went to the printing shop and I, I walked away with like a stack full of prints, I'd have a ton. So had no prior on what would make many or few. And it just turned out to be that way. And, uh, and then actually one other note on that is different cards, different number, active, inactive, and time locked, all these different ways, like little cubbies that 
art and NFTs can end up in. So I like the idea that the actual supply is a combination of like what was intended or unintended, plus all these weird crypto things that can happen, like things being lost or locked. Like someone can choose to lock a huge amount of another card. That changes the dynamics just as much as if we had designed it differently in the beginning. 100%. Love that. Christie's auction is coming up very soon. I want to know what does it mean for you guys to be featured in Christie's and what comes after? What is next in, in your careers and your young careers? Oh man, I'll, yeah, the Christie's thing is like so crazy. I, uh, I've said this a few times on like social media and other talks, but it, I remember being in, um, in art school thinking like, holy shit, if I can make it into Christie's um, after I'm no longer living, like after I'm deceased, like that would be a huge uh, feat. You know, I'm like, how crazy would it be to be auctioned at Christie's as a deceased artist? And I actually had that thought back then. And now I'm like, this is insane. Like it's unfathomable to even be, you know, have, um, have art being auctioned at like the oldest auction house in the, you know, in the world. I mean, it's, it's like the highest bar that you can get to as a, as a living artist. I mean, I, you know, maybe showing at like the Met or Mocha or like MoMA or, you know, one of these other established places, but um, yeah, I mean, that's definitely at the top of the list. So I'm, oh man. Yeah, I hope uh, I hope there's still momentum with Curio after it. I hope there isn't like a major economic collapse and you know all these uh, these other like black swan events. Oops. I hope those don't happen. So yes, hopefully, hopefully we get to keep making art and um, keep benefiting from from that. It looks like it, it looks pretty good with uh, with what happened with the punks and, and that auction. So hopefully history repeats itself there. Just wanted to echo that too because like I I went to art school also. Um, and yeah, you, you are educated, um, in art history and you read about kind of these, you know, past artists whose work, um, are auctioned in, in places like Christie's, um, you know, kind of, what was that? The, the, uh, one of the, one of Leonardo da Vinci's notebooks was auctioned off to, um, Bill Gates there, uh, um, a few years ago, he paid 30 million bucks, you know, just because he wanted that notebook. Um, so this is the kind. This is the kind of level of stuff um, that you see in Christie's. So you know, to be kind of you know from where I am, and to be kind of in a in a collection that is now on Christie's, that's like it's not even. I wouldn't even say that it was ever a dream or a goal because you don't. It's just not something that you think is ever possible. It's crazy. I don't really know how to. I mean, me personally, I don't really know what to do with the information. I mean the like all like I'm trying I'm trying to refocus a lot of my work right now on 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 kind of like training up new artists and things like that that's the that's where I'm that's my next step because like eh, the we've, we've been made so lucky and fortunate by kind of what's happened with Curio and like I think my my next thing is to kind of try to see if I can recreate some of that magic for a whole bunch of other artists um and put them on a on a path like this that's 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 me personally i think oh, i love that talk about your art guild uh sure yeah i'll do a really quick one um so my my brand is called crypto pop i've, I've turned that re it recently into more of a guild so like i've got 42 uh underprivileged filipino artists right now um that we are we're trying to build that up to 100 i i i, I got a, i'm getting some Pretty strong support from folks in the Curio Cards uh, community. Also, uh, we'll probably announce some of that soon. Um, but the, um, the main idea is that like there's so many artists out here at, all over the world, not just here in the Philippines, that that they just fall through the cracks because they they don't have the 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 resource. They have to focus on kind of survival, right? Putting food on the table, things like that, and you don't have time to develop your art. So um, I'm trying to do these things where um, you kind of fund them with enough regular income where they actually do have a little bit of time now to to focus on getting better at the at the at their craft and also hook them up with equipment loans so they can actually buy the gear that they they want and need um I'm, I've, I've, I've got 40 which i kind of i've funded uh, using curio cards royalties and some of my other friends have put in some funds also um i'm trying to get to 100 uh this year 
Um, that's that's kind of the, the main the main target for now. Um, and then we're gonna try to we're gonna hit up some some marketplaces and like do group exhibits and things like that. That's the that's the 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 main goal. Um, and I like if if we do more of these panels together, I'm I'm happy to keep updating you guys as that progresses. But like I've got some pretty talented kids here, and I, like I'm surprised, right? Like because I, I don't know about Daniel, his his art it, because it's hand drawn, he probably doesn't spend thousands of dollars on his equipment, but like I definitely do, <laughs> and um, but the stuff that some of our kids are doing with nothing but like smartphones just with their fingers because they don't even have styluses right it's it blows my mind and I feel I mean I feel both inadequate as an artist but also I feel like like these kids just need to be given a shot really um and it doesn't even take that much right I mean like 500 bucks uh US will go a long way here to like hook you up with some decent equipment and then you know kind of uh, the guild will cover your minting costs and, and stuff like that. So, so yeah, so that's the, that's the, the, the big thing, the big next big thing for me. Um, the, the Chrissy's auction is a wonderful way to get more visibility for what we're doing. And I'm like leveraging the crap out of that to raise money. So yeah, that's the, that's the strategy right now. Yeah. You earned it, man. You definitely earned it. <laughs> yeah. You're like the godfather of art supplies. Uh, well, Godfather is not a great word for, you know, like where it's from, but yeah, oh. <laughs> I, I, I mean, the, we're not the, mafia. The, yeah, the good part. <laughs> yeah, just the good part. Yeah, yeah. Leveraging, yeah. the leveraging. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, uh, so just like Max, I probably told it a couple of times, but like the Christie's thing, like, yeah, I went to art school too, um, and I don't remember any of it, to be perfectly honest. Uh, I just mostly remember graduating and then saying wow this art degree is not applying to anything i'm doing in my real life um but what was interesting is before i graduated like i had done a bunch of web comics and stuff and so i was always doing artist alleys um back in the day at like all these comic conventions and my mom was always like you're wasting your time don't do that like you, you like this is time and money that you're spending at like and at a certain point doing them, I got sick of doing the actual art and I was more interested in like discovering the artists that was were doing the art. And I was oh, like, my goal was like, okay, what I'm gonna do when I grow up is I'm gonna find artists and I'm just gonna expose them to the world. So kind of where this has gone is my mom is now like, oh man, you always said you were gonna be famous. And so she's like validating all these things that I did in the past that she told me not to do because uh, somehow all these paths have led here. So the Christie's thing has been validating for her. For me, it's more like, well, it's not under my real name, which is totally fine. Don't need it to be. Uh, even if you look at the Christie's auction page, it says Robeck World. Great. That's perfect. But like, I don't know, like she's going around and telling her friends and my family is thrilled, but I don't, I, yeah, for me, it's just more interesting because what the outcome similar, similar to Luis is like, I am just now using uh, capital to find artists and like see what we can do and how we can grow so like Christie's has been cool it's a cool cool phenomenon uh, and it'll be really neat to be able to tell the story but what's even more exciting is just the opportunities that have been created through all of this so yeah love that man Daniel take us home it's obviously an honor and in their own ways each of these artists and hopefully myself and so many people in the community have just taken a lucky moment and like reinvested it in art in their own area. So that's like really inspiring. And I guess it just reminds me of drawing where like you can never erase, but you can always add more. And sometimes you can like add more to downplay something else in the drawing, but you know, you can't erase. That's kind of the thing about ink. So this is just another, another notch on the paper, another block that we're mining. And uh, I hope it's a block that does good things. Love that. Travis, give us your perspective, man. Uh, yeah, as pointed out to me, because uh, Robex, uh, one of Robex cards, number 22, the bard is based on me. So while I, I am not as an artist going to Christie's, my likeness is being sold at Christie's, which is just the most bizarre sentence. Uh, I didn't go to art school. Christie's was not on my radar. It's not something I really thought about. I knew of it through like TVs and movies. And I would not have considered my likeness as something to a traded commodity of, of extreme value. So uh, 
just a huge thank you to Robeck for making that crazy nonsense, bizarre uh, moment possible for my life. It's like the, this, you know, this episode in my life is a simulation, right? My likeness is being sold at Christie's. So that's just a completely nonsense sentence. And um, it delights me. I can ask the Discord questions now. Yeah. Okay. Um, we have one here. Is there anything coming up for us in terms of utility for holders? Are we privy to any future drops or anything? And I feel like we covered that a little bit, but um, any plans for future drops, guys? I mean, I'll talk first just because I did the first and I will have a few more. So, and then Daniel probably in the max and I'm sure everybody else has some other thoughts, but uh, what I had done uh, early on as I started to like become a collector in the NFT space was I just talked to a lot of artists and they've kind of all like congregated in secret exclusive clubs with me and they're not really secret exclusive clubs clubs but uh and what i had done was like okay so if any of you want to do some of these remixes i'd love to see like your interpretation of my cards because all of you are way better artists than i was then and probably better artists than i am now and so i've got a lot of really cool like up and coming and like super popular nft artists that are doing remixes of 21 through 23 uh and the first ones went out a couple of weeks ago and I airdropped those to the wrapped holders of 21 through 23. And those were done by uh, an artist named Rylan, um, who is an artist on Foundation. And the frames were done by an artist named Sergeant Slaughtermelon. And he is an art blocks uh, artist. And so it's been, it, he's also the guy who did this background. Um, so he's like, that was a super cool drop. And there's actually a few more in, in the pipeline. I'm coming from some bigger artists as well. Um, but then, after I dropped mine, there were a bunch of people that are like, well, I have a, you know, a number 10, am I going to get a drop? So we're depending on gas costs and stuff like that. I want to provide an opportunity for people to like get some of these that didn't have an opportunity to get the ones that were airdropping directly. So we'll have a couple of remixes that can be claimed uh, by folks across the board. And so long-term the goal is, okay, so we're drop airdropping these cards now but maybe in six months we can leverage them in different metaverses uh, to, to, to add some sort of utility, whether that's in-game items or, or stickers or whatever. There's like all kinds of cool opportunities. So super excited about uh, the, the stuff that we're building on our side or my side. I'm so happy I have one. <laughs> oh man. I'm so happy. Yeah, there's, yeah, there's going to be tons of more drops. Um, I've heard rumors of some really incredible things coming up. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, existing Cure card holders, I'm sure will benefit in other ways um, and possibly uh, sooner than later. Um, but in addition to that, I, the longer term play for me is getting um, um, not just Curio cards, but other communities cards into um, different multiverse situations for um, community engagement, um, different types of rewards, different types of, um, you know, different ways to um, um yeah different alternate ways to engage with the game using these as different i don't want to be too specific but anyway yeah they're going to come to some cool, really cool games for sure i feel like i'm learning a whole new grammar and language of how we can release and do art so i think it's fun to do requests so when people find it meaningful and i hope to work with somebody who has more smart contract skills than I uh, to maybe do like automatic drops that are interesting in some way, but totally still learning and I just enjoy it so far. I, I have not heard any rumors about anything um, up and coming, so I'm not going to say anything about that. Um, uh, for me, like um, my, my, my focus is mostly going to be on my art guild and also kind of um, uh, I'm doing a lot of NFT level stuff here in the Philippines. So kind of I'm, I'm, I'm juggling a lot of things at the moment, um, but, but yeah, I mean, I'm happy to support anything that you guys are doing also, obviously like um, this Curio Cards thing, um, it's opening up so many interesting opportunities for us. And, um, you know, anytime you guys wanna work on something together, like I'm, I'm down for it. So I don't know why I, had, I took the opportunity on a live stream to say that I could have, I guess I could have just, told everyone that on discord but but anyway yeah so that's that's where i'm at i'm happy to follow your lead on this one but any plans for merchandise i know we saw somebody oh. doing some 3d stuff for yeah. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, the well, the 3D thing, uh, someone's creating a 3D model of Curio, which is pretty fun. I actually think that's going to be a, a drop as well. Uh, I think they're just going to like a fan drop, which I'm also really excited about. And uh, we can help them with the smart contract side of that. They're like a 3D artist. And in merchandising, there's a really interesting uh, thing about some of the artists' work. Um, Thoros, Fanip, and Robeck, they all have uh, commercial derivative licenses for holders. If you hold their cards, you have rights to commercial derivative licenses, which I think is... It's pretty bizarre and pretty amazing. And the most, one of the you know, Apple card number was the number one card. It was the first card. I mean, it, not number one in the, like the best. It's, it has a one on it. Um, <laughs> and that is a Phineep card. So I have, I do know of people that are working on uh, Apple merchandise um, by holding the card. We'll see how that goes. There's gonna be like, it'll be a public process. There's like a proposal being written right now, um, but I'll, I'll wait on any kind of formal announcement. Thank you, guys. This was absolutely phenomenal. I learned a lot. Um, I'm still processing all this information. And I hope you guys uh, have a phenomenal day. And we'll see you guys in the Discord. Thank Peace. you so much, guys, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.